Welcome back to our study on the book of Romans. This is the Romans Education Part 7, and this is Session 2. Okay, um, at the break we did something else, so I need to get us back to where we were. We were looking at Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 4, and we were talking about what's the priority? Uh, if, if this wisdom, if thou seekest her as silver, and we talked about the silver coins that a man would have in his pocket that he got because he worked a job and he got an income, and we talked about what that income provided. It provided for the basic necessities of life. But now you come to the next part, and he says, and searchest. He didn't say or, he said and. So there's two different things that are going on. Searchest for her as for, as for hid treasures. Is it plural? Yeah. So I looked up and I thought, okay, what's the difference between seek and search? And you know, we misuse words sometimes. We think they mean something when technically they don't. So let me just show you this. When we talk about seek, George Crabbe said, now he has four words here. This is very enlightening. Examine, seek, search, and explore. That's the four words. Now take a look at this. We examine objects that are near. I can look at this marker and examine it. I need my glasses, but I examine it. We seek those that are remote or not at hand. So if my, if my marker was over here, I, would, I don't have it at hand. So when I go to get this marker, do I know what I'm looking for? Yeah, but I'm seeking this marker. And I know we use the word seek to say we don't know where it is. But actually to seek means I just don't have it here. I've got to go get it. So if you're getting ready to go somewhere in the car and your keys are in your bedroom, you're going to the bedroom because you seek your keys. You know where you're going and you know what you're looking for. You just don't have it at hand yet. That's the seek. But we search those that are hidden or out of sight. If you're seeking your car keys, then you know where to go get them. If you're searching for your car keys, what does that mean? You've lost them. Now here's the good thing. You do know what you're looking for. You just don't know where it is. So now the search is on. Do you see the progression? I examine what's at hand. I seek that that's not at hand. I'm searching now for something else. That's a furtherance. And the last word is explore. We explore those that are unknown. When you explore territory, you don't know what's there, and you don't know where it, it, whatever you're going to find is going to be there. You don't know any of it. So I, I thought that was a real stroke of insight for Crab to write that. And then I did the Oxford English Dictionary. Seek is to try to obtain, and then he put in parenthesis, something advantageous. And, that's you, and, and, and I don't know why that's in there, but I guess because we don't seek for that, which is not to our advantage. I guess we don't look for trouble. Okay, so to put all of that in there, then here's what you have. You had an original commitment, which was your top priority, which said the wisdom that we're going to get from our Father, we should seek that as much as we seek the silver coin in our pocket. In other words, as important as it is to have an income to exist on, that's how important it is to get that wisdom. It, now, the wisdom is not going to pay your bills, but the money in your pocket isn't going to do what wisdom does either. So what he's saying is, how important is it for you to have an income? Well, it's real important. That's how important it is for you to get this wisdom. Now, what I'm about to show you is this. Everything from here up is God's silver wisdom. That's everything we've gotten up to this point. Now, and that, that is just a matter of working and getting an income. 
But when it comes to searching for hid treasures, in fact, when it comes to searching for hid treasures, that you know what that takes? More time and more energy. Why? Why does it take more time and more effort and more energy? That's right, because it takes more to go find it and dig it out and get it. Now, I'm not telling you that you're going to have to go dig it all out. I mean, I'm not saying it that way. I'm going to show it to you, but I can't put it in your life. So the point I'm making is, what we're about to do with this is now we're fixing to learn a part of the education that in order for you to get this into your life is going to take more effort than it would take to put this into your life. You're going to have to work at it a little harder. And, and how much more time and effort? I don't know. But here's the thing you're going to do now. You are now going to learn to make wise decisions based on how you spend your time. Because the education is now going to require more you're going to have to be willing to give more. And if we're looking at this going, oh man, don't tell me I've got to do something else, that's an indicator that you're not looking at this really the way you should. And he's going to give you an incentive to look at it the right way. In fact, I'm going to show you that incentive next. Because since we're talking about this, and remember I talked about the silver, look, the silver, that's the income that covers the basics. This is, this is the silver level. You know what, from here on out, this is the hid, the hid treasures level. Now when you come through this next door, you're not talking about just the things an income can do. Now you're talking about something that goes beyond that. Now, let me show you the verse that goes with this. Because since he talked about treasure, seekest her as silver. Take a look at this. We saw this verse before. Proverbs 3.14. For the merchant... He's talking about the wisdom. In the previous verse, he talks about the wisdom. And he says, for the merchandise of it... When you, when, can you buy... Mer I mean, if a guy had silver, could he buy merchandise? Of course. And he says, but the merchandise of wisdom is better than the merchandise of silver. So what you get when all of this is really up and running in you, what you're going to benefit from this wisdom is going to mean more to you than what the money in your pocket can provide to you. Now look at the second part of this because this is the part that I really wanted us to get to. And the gain thereof than fine gold. Now when he talks about that, is that a step up? Because you move from silver to now, look, fine gold. And I notice he didn't just say gold. He said fine gold. Gold would represent wealth. You dig it out of the ground. But when you dig it out of the ground, what do you got to do? You got to refine it, don't you? Got a lot of stuff in there. But when you talk about fine gold, now you know what you're talking about? Great wealth. You're talking about something beyond just a paycheck. Now, hid treasure or fine gold is talking about something that goes beyond. Okay, now look, I'm going to ask you the question. If he says the gain of this wisdom that you're about to get, that what you gain from this wisdom is more than a man could gain if he had fine gold, then let me ask you, if a man had great wealth today, what does he gain by that? I mean, really, in the, in, as the world looks at it, what does a man gain by having great wealth? He gains status. Thank you. Now, I didn't give these to you in your notes, but they're in mine, and that's one of them. Status. What else does he gain? Respect. Ooh, power. I'm going to break this down. Power. What kind of power? Okay, authority. Okay, what else? He also gains the power of influence. Doesn't he? Did Eric say that? No, I said relatives. 
Gay's relatives. <laughs> I just don't put that one on the board, okay? Um, yeah, that's that, 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 yeah, just, yeah, that, that the truth. Okay, so uh, anything else? I mean, there are lots of them here. In fact, when I was studying this, I stopped, I went in, was sitting in my kitchen, Billy and Loopy were sitting at my kitchen table playing skip bow. And at that time, Loopy was learning the game and he was getting shellacked. He has such since gotten his revenge. But I walked in and stopped their game and I said, what do you gain if you have great wealth in the world? And we talked about it and went through a whole list. And you're naming the very things that were on that list. A man again, status and respect and different kinds of power. Can you think of anything else? I'm not looking for anything in particular. I just want us to think about... Oh, okay, now the degree of comfort that you enjoy is beyond that, isn't it? Sure. I'm looking for one more. I said I wasn't looking for anything in particular, but since... You, huh? Free, freedom is good, and time is one. In fact, a guy will even get to the place where he'll say, money's not my issue, time is my issue. If a guy has enough wealth, his problem is not the money, it's the time. Okay, what did you say? An inheritance. His ability to help others increases, doesn't it? All right? And there is something about an inheritance in there. So... Let's just call it, well, all right, let's put that down. An inheritance and his, his ability to be benevolent. Because sometimes, you know what? You can't give what you don't have, right? And so if a guy had a lot, then when someone was in trouble, he could help. Whereas if all he had was the silver, he, he might be doing all he can to take care of his own issue. Right? So, so here's the, the verse. The merchandise of this wisdom is better than the merchandise you can buy with silver. <coughs> and the gain of this wisdom from here on down, the gain is, is more, it's better than what you gain with fine gold. Now, so if, if, this, if these are the things that you gain with great wealth, then the next question is, how in the world do you know that your father's wisdom is better? In what way is your father's wisdom better than the things that you gain in this world when you have great wealth? And I'm going to let you give me the answers to that too. How is that wisdom better? Because he told you it was, and, and, there, and there are ways in which it is. And he's not trying to make them the same. This wisdom isn't going to go buy you shares in IBM. Thank you. That's the first one. Your father, that wisdom, the benefits to that wisdom are eternal. All of the benefits of great wealth in this world... They not only end when your life ends, they may end before your life ends. How many times have men built a fortune and lost it? Anything else you can think of? In what other way is your father's wisdom, the gain of that wisdom, better? Well, your inheritance in the, in the... Ah, okay. That inheritance is better. What else? Yeah, we got that one, hun. It's eternal. I know you're thinking about. I know your mind is thinking that. What, huh? It's it. It is going to get. Okay, we didn't put position over here, but can we use some of these same words to say? Okay, you can talk about the position you'll have. Excuse me, in the heavenly places will be far superior to any position you could hold in this earth. The authority, just transfer this over. That authority, the influence. There's something else about that. The wisdom that you gain, even though you have it right here on this earth, is completely unaffected by the circumstances that take place in this world. 
if, if, the, if, the, if the economy tanks, does it affect what you gain by your father's wisdom? No. If the economy booms, are you adversely affected? No. If the stock market falls out, you're totally unaffected. It doesn't matter what circumstances, but when you're talking about the wealth that we accumulate in this world, a lot of things can change that in a hurry. You know, when a lot of people had their retirements, and then when the banks made all those bad loans, and, and, you know, and you know what? A lot of people saw their retirement investment shrink. This, however, is unaffected. There's nothing anybody can do to affect it. There's nothing the world can do to affect it. And yet it continues to grow. And, it, and that's exactly right. This is like being in a stock market where you only gain and you never lose. I mean, this is a... There, and we could... Now look, I don't want to spend too much more time on this because I have a lot to talk to you about. But when we're talking about how is this wisdom better than that, because there is an eternal nature to this that is of greater significance. Because when we get to heaven, God is not asking anybody, how much did you make down there when you were on earth? He's not concerned with that. That won't buy you anything. But this is perfectly in line with what your father is doing. And that's another reason, by the way, you won't have to twist anybody's arm to get them to participate in the creature because for the first time, we're going to be engaged in a work that we were created to do. It's going to be a perfect fit. This is, it's going to be a phenomenal thing. Okay, I, I need to move on here. So if we're talking about that hid treasure, then you know what? Then it's going to take a, a little more time to dig this out. And I think that's what's being talked about when we get in to verse 11. So here's what we have. I hope I put this in the PowerPoint. Uh, here's the civil, I'm calling it the silver level of the education. Huh? Did I do it over there? Oh, I kind of did, didn't I? Okay, I kind of set myself up. The Romans 12, 1 and 2, the Romans 12, 3 to 16, the 17 uh, to 13, 7. Uh, that's that's, the, that's the, the silver level of the education. Now we're going to move into the hid treasures or the gold level of the... Oh, and 8 through 10. I'm sorry, the first part and, and judgment. And then, well, I don't have it on a PowerPoint. But th what we're about to do now, 11 to 14, this is the hid treasure or the fine gold level of the education. And because it's hid treasures... It's going to necessitate that we invest more time and work at it a little harder because this is not just being handed to us like a paycheck. This is something that we're going to, that we're going to have to uh, put forth the effort to get. Now, by saying it that way, folks, I'm not trying to imply that your silver wisdom is somehow inferior. That's not what I'm saying. It's the foundational wisdom that you had to have that everything else is going to be built on. It's the same thing like we talked about with the book of Romans. It's the outline that the other things will build on. You have to have this first. This needs to be up and running in you first. It's first things first. But if you're really going to become a threat to Satan's realm, you're going to have to start making decisions about your time in what is good, what is better, and what is best. I'm not saying that you need to become a monk and cloister yourself off with your Bible and never do anything. By the way, it's your interaction in the world that gives you opportunity to put your sonship skills to work. I am not saying that you can never watch another football game. That's not it. I'm not, I know the, 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 the Final Four is, you know, getting close now. I'm not saying you can't watch a basketball game. I'm not saying you have to give up bowling or golf. Although golf, I don't know why anybody. But anyway. You know what? Here's the thing. Let's do first things first. Because you know how easy it is to say, oh, you know, I'm a, I'll give you the perfect illustration. When I was in high school, uh, the Super Bowl was, it was only... 
two or three seasons old. Uh, I remember the first Super Bowl and the second Super Bowl. I remember when the Jets beat the Colts. I hated that. But because I loved the Colts at that time. And then they were in Baltimore, and then they moved, and then it all got messed up. All right, so here's my point. That God did not want that. No. I watched the Super Bowl. It was a Sunday night. I watched the Super Bowl, and I was talking to the pastor of the church that we were going to, and, um, and I said, hey, I'm not going to make it tonight for church because I have a lot of homework, and I need to get my homework done. And he said... So the Super Bowl was more important than church. And I said, no, I'm not skipping church to watch the Super Bowl. I'm missing church to do my homework. He said, yeah, but you put them both off for the Super Bowl. I understood what he said the first time he said it. I was just trying to defend myself. I knew I was wrong, didn't want to admit I was wrong, but you know how it works, right? You're just going, yeah, okay, all right. So you, so you know what? That's, that's the way that was. So you know what? If I had known this principle about time, it, by the way, my dad would have said, hey, I know you want to see the Super Bowl, but you've got to determine what's important in your life. The scary part is, I may have. We always had to do our homework before we got some. Yeah, okay, see, and if you've got a rule like that, that helps you. So all I'm saying is, you know this is going to take a commitment of time. You have to be willing to make that commitment. Or don't expect the payoff that hid treasures bring. Because this is way beyond the merchandise that can be bought by silver. This is merchandise that is at the very top of your father's list. And that, knowing what he is offering you, should be a motivation to say, whatever it takes to get this, that's what I want to do. So I'm just kind of calling that out that way. By the way, so we looked at this in Proverbs, so I thought, you know what? Paul's got to be talking about this. So I look and I go, does he say anything about hid treasure? So I look that up, or fine gold. You know, I'm looking at it in our epistles, right? Because we're looking back at, at really, at Israel's. I, I, the format is the same, we know that. So you know what? It suddenly came to me. I know exactly what this is called in Paul's epistles. I'll show it to you. That he might make known the riches of his glory. In another place, you know he's going to call it? The riches of Christ. These are the riches. When you talk about riches, you may make a pretty good salary, but you might not qualify yourself as rich. These are riches. And he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory. That's us. He has prepared these riches that are supposed to be ours. Let me give you the next one. Romans eleven thirty three. 33. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. That's the riches. He's going to give us a wisdom that it, He equates with riches. And He says, how unsearchable are His judgments ways past finding out. Here's the next one. Ephesians 1, 18. Now, I'm putting the first part in here because you're real familiar with this. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know. And he's going to give you several things he wants you to know. First, what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. There's those riches. He says, in Ephesians, he says, I want you to know about this. I want you to know about these riches. And, and by the way, when he gets down to, I, I got two up here, Ephesians 3.8. Unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. That's advanced doctrine. And that's why I said I'm inclined to say from this point forward, you're in the riches wisdom. 
Now, I'm, I'm saying that with the caveat that, you know what, maybe I'll see something at the start of Ephesians which kind of takes you back to a basic and works you up. But look, I think, I think once you get past here, from there on, do you realize how big that is? I mean, up to 13 verse 10, you're in the silver level, and then from then on, you're in the unsearchable riches. Wow! How much more education is ahead of you? You know what that means? Okay, here's your paycheck, but now I got a whole lot of riches. Bonus. Bonus. Oh, man. I mean, that is, that's incredible. So, let me see if I can give you the next one here. Ephesians 3.16. That He would grant you, according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with might in the inner man. See, it's according to those riches that you're going to get that strength. Do you see how He's connecting this up? And then look at this one. Philippians 4.19. This is one I knew as a preacher boy. I had no clue what it was saying. I thought I knew what it was saying, but I didn't. But my God shall supply all your need. Remember what I told you? We had a need to know some things. According to His riches in glory. You already know what those riches are about. Wisdom and understanding. That's the riches. And those things are going to buy merchandise that is better than the merchandise of fine gold. Of great wealth. This, and, and like we were talking about, I don't know if we talked about at the break or in the session, I think at the break, that, that, those riches, when you spend them to buy that merchandise, you still have all the riches. You didn't diminish the riches that you possess. Isn't that wonderful? Okay, so, let's see, I've got, I got another one. Colossians 1.27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. That's the riches again. And then the last one, Colossians 2.2, 2, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. The riches of the full assurance of understanding. He's going to cause us to understand some things. And when we do, that wisdom is going to result in an understanding that buys a merchandise that is better than great wealth in this world can buy. Now this is, this is what, and I'm underselling it, I know, but this is what causes you to wake out of sleep earlier than you would have before. If you knew that's what it was. As a kid, think about what everybody thinks about Christmas. But you know what? Generally, when kids know Christmas is coming, they get up early. Because they're anticipating something. Well, when we anticipate what this wisdom is going to do for us, it ought to make us wake out of sleep and get going. Because we should be anticipating this. This is not the thing that we go, oh man, I'm going to have to spend more time on this. Oh, brother. This is the kind of thing that says, this is what I've been waiting to get to. This is great. This is the thing that I want to have happen in my life. So, this doctrine of the second component, the Bible says those riches, those treasures, are hid because it's going to take more to get to them and, and, to, and to dig them out. And so our decisions are going to be based on, in, in the first part, on the time element. Is this a good use of my time? Is this the better use of my time? Is this the best use of my time? So I, took, I went over to Corinthians. Yes, they're talking about meat offered to idols, whether or not you should do that. But there's another, there's another thing tucked away in there as to what is... A good thing to do, and what is the best thing to do? That's the point that we're after. So take a look in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23. Paul says this, All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things 
edify not. You know what? Let me translate that in today's vernacular. I have the liberty to do whatever I want to do with my time this week. Yes, you do. But not anything will edify you. And not just anything is expedient. So I talked about that word expedient, so let me give you the Oxford English Dictionary. Expedient, conducive to advantage in general or to a definite purpose. Fit, proper, or suitable to the circumstances of the case. In other words, not every decision you can make is fit and proper to advancing your sonship. Do I have the, I mean, do you, do any of us have the liberty to spend our week any way we want? Sure. We, I mean, it, it, we're at work, we're at work. But when you come home, you know what? You can, you do whatever you want to do. But there's going to come a time when you're going to look and you're going to say, you know what? I've got to have a conversation about this wisdom. I'm going to have to look at some things in my Bible about this wisdom. I'm going to need to look at these notes about this wisdom because this is what I want. And if you go, I don't know, maybe I'll just, you know, you can do, yeah, it's, you can, you, all things are lawful. You've got liberty to do whatever. Just know that you, whatever you do, they don't all edify. They're not all the best use of your time. And because the clock is ticking, that is what we're after here. And so back to Romans 13, 11. And that knowing the time, and that's the time that we have left. That's knowing where we are in our life. And, that, and, and, and now, at this point in the education, it's high time. In other words, be aware of what you've got left to get this done and knowing that at this point in the education, it's now high time to wake out of sleep because you're passing through a door that's now going to put you in a different situation than you were before. It's going to require more out of you, but the payoff is much greater than what was there before. And I'm not asking us to just look at that from the standpoint of what we get out of it, but it is certainly what our Father is talking about when He says the merchandise of that is, is a greater gain than that of fine gold. So I'm going to give you the saying as we get toward the close here. The saying is this. Uh, remember we did some sayings back in the previous in verses 8 through 10? Love one another and love worketh no ill to his neighbor. So now I'm going to give you the saying that encapsulates what I think verse 11 is doing. And it's sitting right in the verse. And here's the saying in verse 11. Now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Now we have to look and see for certain what he's talking about when he's talking about that salvation. Is it true that the time that we have left to get things done because either the blessed hope occurs or we die, that's true, our, our time is limited. But we also need to look at this from the standpoint of the salvation that is going to be offered to us through the hid treasures, through the riches that are going to take us further than ever before. And, and we do need to talk about that next week uh, when we get back here. So let me end with this. This is one of those interdispensational principles. This thing is true in Israel's program just like it's true for us in our program. I'm not telling you they're taught the same way, but I'm telling you that the believing remnant was given several things to teach them. Don't presume upon the future. It's dangerous to do that. In Christ's ministry, he gave a parable. It's in Luke 12, beginning in verse 16. And here's, and here's how it goes. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I'll pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Now look what he's going to do with that. Take thy knees, eat, drink, and be merry. Or what we commonly refer to as the plebeian philosophy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall these things be which thou hast provided? The prob Is it a problem that he had a, a great harvest? No. Is it really a problem that he built bigger barns? No. The problem is what was behind all of that? The problem was... 
I'm just going to live in this world and I'm just going to eat, drink, and be merry. That's what I'm going to do. Well, that was, that was a slothfulness. And so when you look at that, the point, I, now there's a lot of lessons to get here, but one of the things is the guy didn't know how much time he had. The clock was ticking and he wasn't aware of that. Now, I've got to be honest. If I knew I was going to die tomorrow, I'm not sure how much sonship I could get done. Effectually worked in me between now and then, right? But if I thought I only had a year, you know what I'd be doing? I'd be putting my nose to the grindstone. Well, I don't know. None of us know. Let me give you one more. For the believing remnant, after the program is resumed over in the book of James, we are all pretty much familiar with this verse. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. He's telling the remnant, because they only have a certain amount of time to get this sonship established in them. And you know, for them, time is an issue in a very real sense. There's a prophetic program in place here, and there are time restrictions on it. And so for them, he's saying, hey, you've got to get this done while you've got an opportunity. Their life is going to be in very great danger. Absolutely. So, so those, are, those are things out of that program. And, and, and I'm, going to, I'm going to show you one more verse. And I'm going to have you turn in the Bible and we'll be done. Well, if I got, I got two, two minutes and 15 seconds so we can do this. So when he says, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to wake out of sleep. Now we'll have to take this up next time. But when you get to high time, He's saying, okay, we can't put this off. It's now or never. Let's get this done. That's what high time. We say this often in a, very, in a kind of rebuking way when we say to our kids, you know what, it's high time you started listening. Which means you haven't been up till now. So now, as we move into these verses, we're being told it's high time now. To get ourselves in gear. Now the last one I'm going to show you is in the book of Hebrews. And I know that this is when God resumes his program with Israel. But I'm going to make a comparison. I'm hoping I will. I'm going to make a comparison between what's happening here. And what's happening go with the believing remnant. I'm saying this. This is the basic principles that we learned in our education. And now... We're going to go beyond this. We're not supposed to forget about that, but we're supposed to take that, and now we're going to go somewhere further than that alone could take us. I think the same... Th By the way, are we very far along in the education before that jump takes place? Not very far. Considering how much more education we've got in front of us, I see the same thing happening with the believing remnant of Israel. In Hebrews, the program resumes. Look in chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. And, he, and he's talking about... Look, look, chapter 5, in, in the last verse. But strong meat, he's been talking about milk belonging to them that are unskilled. And verse 13, just, just do 513. And everyone that useth milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So he's talking about those who are like babes and those who, you know, are able to digest meat. And now look, he comes to verse 6 and he says, Therefore, or in view of that, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God and of doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of the resurrection of dead and eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. He says, look, there's some basic things that you learned back there. Let's don't go back and relay that foundation. Let's move on unto what? What's the word he used? Let us go on unto perfection. Guess what we're being done right here. Let's don't go back and relay the foundation. These are things that we know. Now let's take that and let's move on unto perfection. 
Now I know that's not the way Paul said it, but I see the same thing happening with the believing remnant that he is saying to us in the book of Romans. And that's going to happen to us as we go on through the education in Corinthians and Galatians. So we're going to come to the place where we're going to come out of this, you know, uh, 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 loving our Father and His business and loving the body and loving the saints and loving our enemies and, and, and loving the institution that God ordained of human government and loving our neighbor. And then we're going to come to, now we're going to make wise decisions on the basis of we know what we have to do and we've only got so much time left to do it and now we're going to make wise decisions on what is the best use of our time. What really takes me into this next section of godly wisdom? And it's in, well I say godly, it is godly wisdom, but it's in the area of judgment. And so now things are going to change. So this kind of sets the stage for us We've done almost all the work we're going to do in 11. We have a few more things to wrap up there. And then we're going to move into verse 12 next week. But I think, because, especially because of our discussion at the break, I think we've all got a pretty good idea of what's taking place here in verse 11. Do you? We can, we can, we can no longer afford to waste time. Now we're going to move into the riches. And this is going to require something of us. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for your goodness and grace to us. And we're grateful that you have given us a foundational wisdom. And now we're going to get a chance to go beyond this into a whole new level of wisdom. And we, we sought that other like silver and now we'll search for this as hid treasure. And the merchandise of both of these is better than the merchandise of silver or fine gold. These are things, Lord, that are going to take us now to a level whereby we won't just make an impact on men, but we're going to make an impact on the invisible realm of the heavenly places. And we're going to be engaging in things that equip us to be able to make that impact. These are the riches of Christ. And they produce a wisdom and understanding that no one else possesses. The adversary has none of this. And thank you that we get to be partakers in it. May we make the most of the opportunity that we have to engage in this.